Step five, getting the tools. So in this step, we're going to get hold of some algorithms and we are going to apply them to our data set. And as I mentioned earlier, the difference between all these named algorithms tends to boil down to what is the allowable shape of the final recipe? What sort of object are we going to use to try to separate our data? Are we going to try to use one line that can have any slope at once? Or are we going to say, no, it has to be vertical and horizontal, but feel free to use multiple lines? Are we going to go for something super flexible? There are many more options beyond these. The math and machine learning, let me spell it out again, is in service of one of two things. Finding patterns in old data, or figuring out if new stuff works. Machine learning researchers care more about this one, and that's what's in the machine learning courses. How do you build a better microwave if you don't understand how this one works? Applied machine learning cares about this second one. This is the statistical math. This is not to be sniffed at. It's still something that you should take seriously, and it is math that you should master if you want to be part of the technical side of the application. So it's not like applying it means there's nothing, that no equations ever in your life. Well, there should still be someone who's responsible for that careful, rigorous assessment, that statistical stuff, in your project. And that's what applied will focus on. But before you get to testing it, though, from your applied perspective, what are we dealing with? We've got ingredients that we are shoving through some algorithm. We get a recipe out on the other side. And of course, we don't just serve that recipe immediately. We've got to taste it. But the first recipe you try is never going to be the one that works properly. So in practice, you're going to shove a whole lot of different ingredient combinations through a whole lot of different algorithms. And you're going to get a whole lot of results out. And then you will taste them all and see what's worth iterating on, just like in a kitchen. And this seems straightforward until you realize that your world is this. Oh my goodness. OK, take a deep breath. First things first. Not all of these will be available to you in whatever framework programming language you have chosen, so it's already simpler. After that, you will aggressively eliminate bad options. So don't look for the perfect right option. Instead, take everything that's available to you and throw away the obviously bad ones. So some ways we do some throwing away. You know what label you want. It's a binary label, like yummy, not yummy. This method wants to output for me a multi-class label, like cat, dog, bear, giraffe. Clearly not a match made in heaven. Throw away that method. What about learning type? You want to do supervised learning? That method is for reinforcement learning. OK, throw it away. It's not for you. How about data set size? Can it actually handle the data set that you're trying to deal with? If not, what are we even doing here? Available info. Your Inputs have nothing to do with the timestamp. It rather insists it wants a timestamp, OK? Not for you either. And so you go through this list, and eventually, that's what you're left with. It's aggressive elimination that you're going to do. And then of these, which are you going to try? Whichever you have time for. So then the trick, the applied machine learning engineer, they eventually do end up learning a lot about the nature of the algorithms just from practicing. They don't have to when they start out, but you know they end up learning this stuff kind of in the way that you learn the names of a, of a cast of bad soap opera characters just by being in waiting rooms. Not because you're trying to, but mere exposure. So you learn this stuff in the end, but what you want to try to study up on, on purpose, is not how the algorithms work. It's how long does each one take to try on the various kind of data situations. If you have a good handle of that, you are an extremely potent, powerful machine learning engineer. And so if you know this one takes two seconds, this one takes five seconds, or this one takes two years, well, what order are you going to do it in? You'll only try the difficult one if the other ones don't give you any love. And so Google engineers, they keep coming to me because they spend too much time around researchers. We've got a huge research division here. They keep coming to me being like, Cassie, here's my problem. They tell me the problem. Which algorithm should I use? Should I use thing or should I use thing? And I have to remind them, okay, thing one, how long does it take to try two minutes? Thing two, how long does it take to try three minutes? Why are you here asking me? You should have tried them already. And even if the textbook says don't try it, 
try it anyway if it takes no time. Because th what the textbook is recommending is based on assumptions. Your business problem is not in the textbook. And you don't know whether those assumptions hold for your business problem. Hey, try it anyway. You never know. You find out by tasting it. So in practice, if the inputs and outputs into an example that comes with that software package look kind of like your inputs and outputs and doesn't take that much fuss to re-wrangle your data set to shove it in there, go for it. See if it works. If it doesn't, try something else. Iterate towards a solution. That's what you're doing. Let go of anxiety. And so my advice is not to be the person who suffers most in machine learning, the perfectionist. Perfectionists have a really hard time here. They really are anxious about getting it right first time. You're never going to do that. Free yourself to make a glorious mess, because that's what it takes to succeed in the end. You never get it right first time. Okay, now it is time for lunch.